I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. Now, I want to say again that my timeline got a little mixed up. I misread a few things when I was working on the timeline, so I put, I filmed Second Chron, uh, sorry, I filmed Second Kings chapters two and three before I filmed Second Chronicles chapter twenty. But as I was reading Second Chronicles twenty, I realized that it actually takes place before Second Kings chapters two and three. And so I've reordered it in my releasing of it. I have put them in the proper chronological order. But there are some references and stuff because I, because I did them out of order on accident. So I want to reemphasize that. But in this video, because I was running into those complications, I forgot that chapter 20 of Second Chronicles has Joseph Smith translations. So let's look at what these translations are, what are these, these corrections in Second Chronicles chapter 20. First, verse 2 reads, in the, in the King James, we read, Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea, on this side Syria, and behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is in En Gedi. Now, the corrections here, very minor, it changes B to R, so instead of they be in Hazazon Tamar, it's they are in Hazazon Tamar. Just an update in language, nothing serious. But then it says, which was called En Gedi. Again, not a significant change in meaning, just an update in language. It's nothing significant there. So, verse 6, King James reads, And said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heaven, of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Here is the Joseph Smith translation. And said, O Lord God of our fathers, thou God who, who art in heaven, and rulest over all the kingdoms of the heathen, and in thy hand thou hast power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. Now again, not, not a significant change in meaning, but I definitely like this change, because this makes it more of an opening to a prayer. We're actually getting a prayer here. This feels, you know, Lord God of our fathers, thou God who art in heaven. This is the opening of a prayer. The, the other way is more just saying, I don't know exactly how to explain it, but it, it's more as in challenging God to prove himself. Well, the change makes this more of a prayer. And for that reason, I like it better. And it's the same thing in verse 7. We have, Art not thou our God who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land? But Joseph Smith removes a few words, so now it's, Thou, our God, didst drive out the inhabitants of this land. So again, it's no longer a challenge. I say, aren't, aren't you the one that did that? No, I say, you did this, and we need you again. Verse 11 in the King James says, Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. Joseph Smith's translation has this, Behold, they reward us not, but have come to cast us out of thy possession. So again, I mean, it's still basically the same meaning, but much clearer in its in its rendition here. This is just after, you know, this is verse 11, verse 10 is where he says, you know, you told us not to take any of their land, and we didn't, but they don't give us any, they don't honor us for this, not giving us any reward for this. Instead, they're trying to take our land. Now, let's, last verse here, last, uh, verse 17. In the King James, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. So this is God's response to Jehoshaphat's prayer. And the Joseph Smith translation says, Ye shall not go to fight in this day. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. And I think that's also a much clearer declaration here. Instead of just saying, oh, you don't need a fight, is this? No, he's saying, you don't, don't go today. If you recall, they didn't go that day. They went the next day, because that day was the day that the armies were destroying themselves. So, anyways, I'm going to leave that here. Not not significant, not real significant changes, but I do like that it changes. It puts Jehoshaphat's words as a prayer 
rather than as a challenge to God. And I think it is a much, it's a much more beautiful way of putting it. But anyways, I'll see you in the next one.